again. All right, we are on the home stretch of this fine evening. And thank you, Mona, so much for sharing your thoughts. It is truly, truly empowering to see so many of you choosing to make an impact in the stories we've heard tonight. I'm back on the stage tonight um, to encourage each of you to financially support WEC, which is why we're here. So everyone in this room tonight is here because we share a desire to protect the environment in our great state. This shared value has come to each one of us through a different path. For many of us, this connection with the environment started with our parents, our families, or our communities. So my story of awakening a lifelong love for the environment started with my parents, one of whom actually worked at REI for many years. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> my parents moved here from Florida when my dad got a job at Boeing after graduating from college, which is probably familiar to, to many of you here. But they really moved here because of the mountains and the rivers and the water. They wanted to live their lives in our beautiful outdoors and they wanted their children to share that experience as well. So what, since I got involved with WEC, what typically happens to me at these events is someone will come up to me afterwards and say, aren't you one of Jeff and Vernal's girls? So, and I say yes, but um, it turns out that the outdoor enthusiast crowd of the 1970s is still alive and going strong. You in the room who know, you know who you are. So remember, this was the era of straight skis and cheese co-ops. Yeah, all that cheese in the freezer. I'm not sure that was such a good idea, but it was there. Um, but my parents decided to instill their passion in the outdoors in me and my two sisters by taking us outside. So from skiing to hiking to whitewater kayaking, we grew up literally immersed in this beautiful environment. We had a big yellow van that took us everywhere. So it's kind of like the Scooby-Doo van. And our summer vacations and weekends were spent going somewhere, usually uphill, boys uphill, um, in that van. Whether it was to car camp, ski, find a trailhead, find a river put-in spot, that big van somehow took us on logging roads that I wouldn't go on today in a four-wheel drive. But somehow, we always made it somewhere, usually somewhere remote, and always somewhere beautiful. So as I approached my teenage years, and for me, macrame gave way to Motley Crue, my parents, yes, my parents had some well-founded concerns that I could be headed into trouble. Turns out I was a very difficult preteen and teen. I wanted to rock, and my parents wanted me to hike. So the solution that my parents came up with to help get me back on track was that I should, of course, learn how to whitewater kayak. So for my 13th birthday, my parents bought me a kayak, and complete with lessons. And my dad signed us up for the Kayak and Canoe Club, and we spent many weekends whitewater kayaking on Washington's rivers. So at the time, as you might imagine, I thought that this was the worst thing ever. You know, it's not exactly what a teenager wants to do, is to spend their time kayaking. But now that I'm a parent, I see that this was a truly genius move on my parents' part. It not only gave my dad a connection to me at a difficult time, it also built in me what has become a lifelong affinity for the environment. My family's experiences in our amazing outdoors have shaped both the career I chose and where I choose to spend my volunteer time. I own a communications agency that focuses on environmental issues. And at my firm, we want nothing more than to help businesses who are doing good to help this planet, like REI. In my volunteer time, I choose to work with WEC because they really do make an impact. I am 100% confident that my dollars that I personally invest in WEC going a long way to protect and enhance and restore Washington's environment for everybody who lives here. So there are a few reasons why I believe this. First off, WEC is the best at creating smart policy approaches that are grounded in science, something that we are lacking at the federal level right now, and you've heard a bunch about this tonight. <laughs> Secondly, our partnership with Washington conservation voters makes us stronger. 
When you combine smart policy with holding elected officials accountable, change really does happen. Another thing that I am really super proud of is how WEC is leading the way to ensure that the environmental movement works for solutions that address environmental injustice. We are doing this by integrating a racial justice lens across all of our work and everything we do, while also building bridges and partnerships with communities of color and tribal nations. And while doing that, we are also holding ourselves accountable for how we work with those partners, as well as how we are accomplishing the goals of those partnerships. This is not only necessary to make environmental progress, it is also the right thing to do. And then lastly, the staff at WEC are amazingly talented. They are smart, they are dedicated, their determination, it's, it is truly inspiring to get to work with these people. So betting on them to push change and make things happen is a really, really smart bet. So our region is growing rapidly, and the decisions we make over the next five to 10 years will determine the future for another generation or two. How and where do we grow? How do we protect our water and our air? How do we move toward a clean energy future and stop investing in a fossil fuel past? And how do we chart a just and sustainable future together? So now, before Sasha comes back on the stage, I'd like you to just take a minute and close your eyes. Think about your favorite beach, your favorite park, your favorite trail, your favorite place in Washington. Then reflect, why did you come here tonight? What is it about Washington State that you love? What legacy do you want to leave for future generations? What is the impact that you want to make? Thank you, Julie.